Welcome to German Grammar Videos. Thank you for watching. This presentation will examine German relative pronouns and clauses. The presentation will first introduce the concept of relative pronouns and clauses in English before moving over to a discussion of this grammar topic in German. We will see that relative pronouns derive their gender and number from their antecedent in the main clause but that their case is determined by their function in the relative clause. We will also see that relative clauses in German manifest an unusual syntax with verbs coming in the final position of the clause. Once we have discussed these topics, I will, I will provide examples of relative pronouns in the nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive cases. In these examples, I will rely solely on a masculine singular noun as an antecedent, as this shows most clearly the changes in the relative pronoun. Let's get started. Relative clauses are used to give additional information about something without starting another sentence. In the sentence you see on the screen, the main clause, he had the book, is augmented with a relative clause, that I wanted. Main clauses can always stand on their own, but relative clauses cannot. As you see on the screen, the relative pronoun that introduces the relative clause. Other relative pronouns in English include who, whom, whose, and which. In English, a restrictive relative clause gives us essential information about the noun it modifies and is not set off by a comma. A non-restrictive relative clause, however, provides us non-essential information about the noun it modifies and is set off by a comma. I raise this point not to belabor the difference between these two types of relative clauses in English, but to introduce an important feature of German relative clauses. As we will see in the coming slides, all relative clauses in German are set off by a comma. By means of a relative pronoun and clause, you can join two sentences together that stand on their own, but have some related component. For example, both sentences you see on the screen, das ist der Mann, that is the man, and ich sehe den Mann, I see the man, are complete sentences and make perfect sense by themselves. I can use the one shared element that both sentences have, Mann as the hinge for joining these two sentences together. As we will see in the coming slide, I accomplished this by using the first element as the antecedent and removing the redundant element in the second sentence. What functions here as a definite article will then be put into service as a relative pronoun. What we have now is a tighter, more flowing sentence. Das ist der Mann, den ich sehe. That is the man whom I see. It is important to note that a comma is used to set off the relative clause from the main sentence. The relative pronoun, den, now introduces the relative clause. The redundant element has been removed, but the antecedent, man, is still in place. There are a few rules governing how relative pronouns are used, so let's take a look at them now. In German, the relative pronoun introducing the relative clause is influenced by two things. First, the gender and number of the pronoun is influenced by the antecedent in the main clause. In the sentence you see on the screen, das ist der Mann, den ich sehe, that is the man whom I see, the relative pronoun den refers back to the antecedent, der Mann, in the main clause, and agrees with this noun in both gender and number. That is to say, the relative pronoun is both masculine and singular. Second, the case of the relative pronoun is determined by the function of the pronoun in the relative clause. In the sentence you see on the screen, the relative pronoun, den, is the direct object of the first person singular verb, sehe, see. The relative pronoun, which we have determined in the prior slide must be masculine and singular, must therefore also be in the accusative case. Although it may be difficult at times to divide your attention between the main and relative clauses to determine the number, gender, and case of the relative pronoun, 
your ability to do so will increase with practice. The main thing is not to give up and to keep trying. Finally, there are a few important syntactical features of relative clauses that need to be addressed. First, it is important to place the relative pronoun and clause as close as possible to the antecedent that they modify. In the sentence you see on the screen, the relative clause comes right after the noun, man. If, however, a preposition is used to modify the relative pronoun, this preposition will be placed immediately before the pronoun. In the sentence you see on the screen, das ist der Mann, für den ich arbeite, that is the man for whom I work, the accusative preposition für comes before the accusative masculine relative pronoun den. Second, since relative clauses are a type of subordinate clause, the conjugated verb needs to be moved to the very end of the clause. Here the verb sehe comes at the very end of the relative clause. In the case where other verb elements are present in the sentence, such as when you form the present perfect tense, the conjugated auxiliary verb still comes at the very end of the clause. In the sentence you see on the screen, das ist der Mann, den ich gesehen habe, that is the man whom I have seen, the conjugated verb comes at the very end of the sentence, right after the past participle, gesehen. As you have by now certainly noticed, the relative pronouns in German are very similar to German definite articles, with the exception of all the genitive forms and the dative plural form. These exceptional forms are displayed in bold on the screen. Now that I have explained the concept of relative clauses and pronouns, Let's move on to examples of how to use them. As I mentioned earlier, I will provide examples of relative clauses in the nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive cases. In these examples, I will rely solely on a masculine singular noun, der Mann, as an antecedent, as this shows most clearly the changes in the relative pronoun. In the sentence here, das ist der Mann, der freundlich ist, that is the man who is friendly, the masculine singular relative pronoun der is in the nominative case as it acts as the subject of the relative clause and provides us more information about personal characteristics of the antecedent. You'll recall from prior presentations that when the main verb of a sentence is sein, to be, you will use the nominative for both the subject and any predicate elements. In the sentence you see here, das ist der Mann, den wir besuchen, that is the man whom we visit, the relative pronoun is in the accusative case. The reason for this is that the pronoun is the direct object of the verb besuchen, visit, and receives the action of this verb. In this slide, you can see clearly that the gender and the number of the relative pronoun, masculine singular, is determined by the antecedent but that the case, accusative, is determined by the function of the pronoun in the relative clause. In the sentence you see here, das ist der Mann, dem wir helfen, that is the man whom we help, the relative pronoun is in the dative case. The reason for this is that the pronoun is the indirect object of the verb helfen, to help. You will recall that some verbs in German, such as helfen, take an indirect object instead of a direct object, in that the indirect object describes to whom or for whom the action of the verb is performed. To help you understand this concept better, it is perhaps a good idea to translate the sentence in this manner. That is the man to whom we give help. Again, you will see that the gender and the number of the relative pronoun, masculine singular, is determined by the antecedent, but that the case dative is determined by the function of the pronoun in the relative clause. We can also have a relative pronoun as the object of a dative preposition, as you see here on the screen. In this sentence, das ist der Mann, mit dem wir reden, that is the man with whom we talk, the dative preposition is placed before the relative pronoun. The final case we will examine here, the genitive, is a bit more complicated. 
Characteristic of a genitive relative clause is the inclusion of a second subject in the relative clause. In the sentence you see on the screen, das ist der Mann, dessen Auto hier ist, that is the man whose car is here, the neuter nominative, nominative noun, das Auto, is the actual subject of the clause. Although the relative pronoun dessen does indeed refer back to the antecedent in the primary clause, it is the concept of ownership or possession expressed in the pronoun that actually allows us to combine the clauses. This idea of ownership or possession expressed in the genitive relative uh, pronoun can perhaps be better seen if we use two sentences instead of one. Here the concept of ownership is more visible in the personal possessive pronoun sein, or his. The two sentences here express the same idea presented in the sentence on the prior slide. The use of a relative pronoun, however, however creates a tighter, more flowing single sentence. And that concludes this presentation on German relative pronouns and clauses. The German Grammar video series is produced by David Neville, Associate Professor of German. The videos, scripts, and lecture slides are released under a Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial, Share Alike 4.0 International License. Don't be a square. Remix and share.